training protocol. This is kind of the nuts and bolts of standard amplitude training. Okay. So for instance, let's start. For one, I'm going to jump down here in the middle and it says select channel to adjust. This happens to be a one channel protocol. So it's pretty straightforward. We're on channel one. We start back up here at delta and we see a go, a stop, and an ignore. Basically, on this particular protocol, delta is on ignore. Ignore is defined as no feedback based on this component. You can still view it, you can still watch the thermometer, but you're not going to get any sound feedback and it's not going to drive a game. Okay, we can simply monitor purposes only. As I drop down one, we see theta. Well, theta happens to be a stop. So stop, inhibit, downtrain, you know, there's different terms that people use. But basically, the goal here is that we want to decrease amplitude of this component. Okay. We see a number over to the right in this white box. It says 5.9. Anybody want to guess what unit of measurement that is? Is that hertz? Microvolts? Microvolts, Microvolts and what's it represent? Exactly. It's going to represent the starting threshold of this session. Right here. Cursor. Theta, 5.9. Okay. The reason I bring it up is I want you to make sure that you don't think that it's Hertz. It has nothing to do with Hertz. People, because what will happen is people go, well, high beta, that's not an 11.8 Hertz. High beta is supposed to be 20, you know. So, you have to make sure that when you're looking at a specific field, you know what it's supposed to represent. Now, where did this 5.9 come from in this instant? It's a brand new session, brand new folder. It's a default number we give you to start with. Means nothing really, okay? However, let's say it's session number two. If it's session number two, it's the ending threshold of the previous session. So if that it's not going to be an average. It's going to be the last number of the last session. It's the last number of the threshold as the session ended prior to post baseline. While feedback was happening, it's the ending threshold. So this is because we opened it up within a person. This is specific to that person. On session number two. Session number one, it's a default number that Brain Master throws in to give you a place to start when the session begins. Okay, you can adjust it, of course, from the train screen live. If you're doing auto thresholding, the computer will adjust it for you. Okay, that all makes sense? Well, What's going to happen with a brand new person in the first session is that you're going to run, and we're going to get to that in a little bit, you're going to run what's called a pre-baseline. You're also going to have auto thresholding set up. And the auto thresholding setup is on percentage of feedback that you're wanting. So the, the person's going to do a pre-baseline. There's going to be no feedback. After that 30 seconds or one minute, whatever you define it as, the computer's going to look over that last 30 seconds or that last minute look at the percentages that are your goal and say okay here's where the threshold needs to be to meet the percentages that she preset that she wanted 70 percent reward it's going to set the threshold and the person's going to begin training on it so this number for the first session doesn't mean a lot because the computer is going to adjust it anyways when the feedback begins based on where is that person today so here just on the screen If, it, if theta is under a stop, it's inhibit theta, correct? And see on mine, theta is a stop. So their, their, their goal is to decrease the amplitude of theta. They're using theta as an inhibit. And the other ones are just ignored. Well, not all of them. As we go down the list, we see alphas ignore, low bays ignore, but when you get to beta, beta is a go. For this particular protocol, beta happens to be the reward. Right. And again, these sites refer back to the original labeling we did in the electrode screen. 
Okay. As an additional reference. And then what's this user? User band is simply an additional component that you can use at your own discretion. Oftentimes it's on ignore, nobody's doing anything with it. But sometimes, for instance, I've seen people, especially with like alpha theta training, they'll have delta as an inhibit, theta as a go, alpha as a go, high beta as a go, and they'll use the user, and what they'll actually do is do a combined um, component that happens to go from 4 to 12, so it's kind of like a thalpha. It's a combination of both theta and alpha, and they want to chart that separately to see, as an average, how did it change if you look across the wide band? Yeah, and I'd just like to give another example. The mm -hmm. user, I use the user thing a lot when I'm doing a wide band inhibit, and I want to cover an orbit, a particular area that might be kind of large of, of a frequency band that I want to inhibit or squash. But I, I like to have get information in real time uh, about what's going on with the other bands. Right. So I can, you know, I can use uh, Brownbeck's four hertz you know, stair step thing. Right. Uh, so each band is where and you can immediately notice what's sticking out. Right. But still you're doing your training by using user. Right. It's kind of like separate. It's so that's kind of nice. Yeah, it's really a, an extra component. We park it up high, but it really, it can be anywhere. It could be one to three, it could be four to eight, it could be two to 13. It's just an additional component available to you. So instead of seven components, you have eight. Right. The threshold would happen to start at 5.9, but more likely the computer is going to adjust that anyways. And the threshold for high beta would be 11.8, but again, the computer is going to adjust it anyways. That's just a starting point. That's all. Does that make that sense? Make much okay. It really doesn't make much difference, especially on session number one, because it's going to be adjusted. The good thing is, is for session number two, when you come in here, you can, you can tell at least make a mental note, where did we end on session one? The computer's still gonna adjust session two per the how that person is today. If they were up all night and they drank coffee all morning and they came into your session, more than likely their threshold is not gonna be the same as it was last week that they slept 12 hours before they got there. So again, it's just a starting number, it's an additional piece of information and then it's there for you to do with what you want because the computer's gonna adjust the threshold. But I think you should warn newbies that if the, the, the microvolt setting is way out of whack from what the client is really kicking out, mm -hmm. for that first minute, you're not going to have any sound reward. You're going to wonder what the hell is. You're, it'll be a bad minute. For Unless you. you use the y key. a baseline. Or a baseline. Yeah. That's why I am a proponent of baseline. I think, without sounding too ridiculous, I think it's ridiculous not to use a baseline. Because without a baseline, you never have two like samples to compare. If you use a pre and post baseline, you have pre baseline, rested state, no feedback. You train for 20 minutes, you have a post baseline, rested state, no feedback. And you can compare where was their theta when we started, where is it when we finished, and they're like samples. You can't compare pre baseline, no feedback, train for 20 minutes, session, the person still was getting feedback, it ended, where was their theta? Not a useless comparison. Okay, they're no longer, you're comparing no task to task. They really don't, you know, relate that well to each other. They were other. making an assumption that when they quit training, that, that whatever they were doing is going to last for another 30 seconds. Well, it's a good idea to see, does it? When there's no feedback, where is their rested state for theta? Not when they're engaged. Now again, some people might go, oh, you're being ridiculous, that doesn't mean anything. I don't see what the downside is of having a pre and post baseline. Okay, it's a, I think it's a good idea. Well, they're, they're compared on any of your re review pages. So, okay. All right, great. Any questions up here on the go, stop, and ignore? Everybody understand? Mm -hmm. Go means there's going to be a reward. Stop means it's an inhibit. Ignore means no feedback at all.